developing now. A suspected killer has his day in court. Tonight, the new details we're learning about the brutal murder of a young mother with her three children in the apartment. Tillian Harvey made his first court appearance this afternoon in Pierce County. Prosecutors say he shot his girlfriend and tried to kill someone else in an apartment in Tacoma. Como's Nick Popham is live outside the Pierce County Courthouse with what investigators are saying happened. Nick? Well, it's hard to believe that Tillian Harvey is only 21 years old, but when you look at the court documents, police detail pretty thoroughly what they witnessed when they went into that apartment on Tuesday. They witnessed uh, three kids alone in that room with their murdered mom. Okay, you're Tillian Harvey, right? Is that a yes? Yeah. This is one of the first times we're hearing from Tillian Harvey after being accused of attempted and first-degree murder. The courtroom was filled with loved ones for Alicia Simpson, who police say was killed by Harvey earlier this week. While none of them wanted to speak with us today, Simpson's mom spoke with us earlier in the week, eager to find out the truth. I'm just waiting for the police to tell me what they found out. And unfortunately, law enforcement discovered an ugly scene. See, according to court documents, police received reports that someone had been shot at this apartment complex on Pacific Avenue. When they entered the suspected apartment, they found Simpson on her bed with gunshot wounds and her three kids. The oldest child, a five-year-old, said that Harvey had shot their mom and had put a gun to the five-year-old's head. The kids didn't deserve to be in the presence of what was done to her. Detectives claim that Harvey may have tried to shoot the five-year-old, but the chamber of his gun was empty. Harvey supposedly fled shortly after this and was eventually arrested after his mom took him to the hospital for, quote, mental health-related issues. At his hearing this afternoon, the prosecuting attorney questioned whether Harvey would be fit to stand trial. Based on the allegations contained in the probable cause declaration, it sounds like his mother was talking about how he had been off his medication that brings him to sending mental health. Now at 11, another homeless encampment gone near downtown Seattle and why some neighbors welcome the sweeps, others feel it's only complicating the problem. A local professor tells us people just get shuffled around and can end up right back where they started, even when they do accept shelter. Couples Joel Miranda live tonight in Seattle with the impacts of encampment sweeps as the city ramps up its efforts. Joel? At Preston and Mary, earlier today, this sidewalk was a row of tents and trash, but city workers came and cleared it out. Now, the professor we spoke with says that these kinds of sweeps, well, they only hide the problem, and they can start the cycle all over again. The pace of encampment clearings is picking up under Mayor Bruce Harrell, who says the months of outreach at Woodland Park paid off with more than 80 people accepting shelter. Different story with the sweep at Sixth and Cherry, where nearly half the people turned down the shelter being offered, but got forced out anyway. It ends up being really punitive in many different ways, besides just not necessarily having another place to go. UW professor Josephine Ensign is also a nurse who provides medical care to people living on the streets and has written several books on homelessness. Doing sweeps, you know, people call it whack-a-mole, where we do a sweep here, um, another encampment shows up. Last month, the city cleared out a troubled homeless camp in Crown Hill. One tent has already returned, and the professor says sweeps are short-term and short-sighted. A lot of people who experience homelessness have really significant trauma in their childhoods or you know, in, the, in their past, and this can be really re-traumatizing. The mayor says the success at Woodland Park shows that public spaces can be cleared while still helping the vulnerable people living there, and the record number of shelter referrals proves it. The professor says shelter referrals are a start, but they don't mean people will end up in housing. I think it's important for all of us to kind of push back on those statistics. Again, not all the encampments being cleared are getting the same time and attention as Woodland Park, and it remains to be seen where the people being swept end up. Back to you. Joel, thank you. Shelter availability is a critical component moving forward with an encampment sweep. We checked. Seattle has about 2,800 shelter beds paid for with public dollars. The city's HOPE team has anywhere from 7 to 10 beds available on any given night. Throughout King County, emergency shelter beds are about 76% full on average.
Volunteers hit the streets of Seattle today. What a day it was sparkling tonight. It's part of the mayor's one Seattle day of service. Volunteers and partners responded on an effort to build community, including more than 125 events citywide. This is part of the mayor's plan to give back to the community. Como Suzanne Fon has that story. On this one day, volunteers all across Seattle were focused on one thing making the Emerald City a better place. I'm gonna start crying because it's emotional to see the, the, these old buildings getting tagged. Nancy Weston and her team from Pure Clean Northwest were among the thousands of people who donated their time and efforts to One Seattle Day of Service. I love it. I, I mean, we wanted an opportunity to help, and so here it is, and it was perfect timing. In Pioneer Square, as many as 200 volunteers turned out doing all sorts of projects. We did storm st uh, drain stenciling, litter pickup, lots of planting and weeding, so the medians and the green spaces. The Alliance for Pioneer Square is one of the many community partners for this day of service. Seattle Public Utilities, Seattle Department of Transportation, Office of Economic Development, the Sounders, OL Rain, a lot of people are participating in this. It's not just one group, it's a whole community. The mayor of Seattle also out and about today showing support for his special one day event that's uniting numerous communities. Friends of Little Saigon banded together and helped pick up trash in their neighborhood. Volunteers with the mission continues painted over tagging. In Belltown, this whole alley has been a mess. The alley behind the Moore Theater looked like this Saturday morning. The alley itself was one of the worst in Seattle for in terms of graffiti and dirt and clutter. But with the help of 30 volunteers, supplies from the city, and two to three hours of work, it's a brand new place. I love it. I love it. This is a great thing. It makes all the difference. It's ownership over the city. It's, uh, you know, it's been a rough couple years, and we're coming back. The mayor plans to make the day of service an annual event. In Seattle, Suzanne Fon, Como News. And in Tacoma, four teens recovering after being shot while they sat in a car at a red light. New tonight, we are hearing from the mother who says her daughter is one of those teens shot. She is just 15 years old. We now know the teens were on their way to get ice cream when that shooting happened. Como's Jackie Kent has the very latest. She's at that intersection where it happened. And Jackie, we know that teen remains hospitalized right now. How is she doing? Better than yesterday is what the mom tells me. She was shot three times. As you can imagine, a devastating experience for the whole family today. The mother and a couple other family members came out to this intersection to see where that shooting happened. They believe this attack was completely random. They were just going to get ice cream and for this to happen to them. A Fife woman tells us someone fired shots at her 15 year old daughter and her teenage friends yesterday as their vehicle sat at the red light at 56th and Yakima in Tacoma. All of them are kids and they're all traumatized. She says they were heading to the waterfront to get ice cream when four of the five people inside the car were injured. Witnesses reported hearing shots in the area around 530 and seeing another vehicle speeding off. She is shot in her neck. She's shot in her shoulder. The bullets are still there. Sharda only wants her first name made public because her family doesn't know who the suspect is. She says her daughter did not get a good look at the shooter because she was in the back middle seat looking at her phone before she was shot three times and believes it was a random attack on this group of teens. They hang out all the time. Nothing's ever, they've never been in drama together. My daughter doesn't be in the mix like that. She usually is home. So this is like, it's traumatizing to the whole family. A clerk at the nearby smoke shop says this kind of gun violence is unusual for the neighborhood. Just small, petty crimes. It's never guns. It's never that that I see or have heard so far, you know. And if it is, it's again a lot of action that's targeted between people. It's not random people. It's not random acts of violence. Now Sharda's family is by her daughter's side at the hospital and is grateful for the other teens in the car she says drove her daughter and carried her into St. Joseph's. They're going to have to live with this forever. And I think the whoever did this is a coward. Hi everyone, I'm Preston Phillips from Como News. Thanks for checking out the Como YouTube channel. You can see more of our videos right here by clicking on the video links for more news from the Seattle area and Western Washington. Oh, and don't forget to click the subscribe button below so you don't miss our YouTube updates.